Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101 out here with Will from Manus Outdoors. We are in a whole different part of Ohio today. We're at LT Wright's shop. Uh, just talking some business and watching the beginning of the process of the JX2 Jessmic. And we're going to give you a little tour of the facility and let you see exactly how they make knives here. So right now we're getting ready to go inside and we're going to put some key stamps on a couple Jessmics. And what the key stamp is, if you haven't heard me mention it before, if you go to ltwrightknives.com, there's a section on there called the Pout House. That is a members only forum. And that is where you find all the secret uh, knives that you don't know about. The things that aren't normally on the website to choose from. That's where they have specials, uh, one ofs, just all sorts of you know secret membership type stuff in the pout house so these key stamp chess mix those are going to be only available to the first five people in the pout house that pick one up so it just makes them a little bit more ultra rare and then we're also going to knock out you know the initial grind on the first chess mix and basically just see how things work here so let's go ahead and get inside and see what's up maybe a half Lean on it. A little more. Okay. Up. Tighten it back up. There we go. The secret mark. Don't pump it. I almost want to think of this as sort of one piece. So I'm going to try to keep this as one unit right here. And instead of kind of doing this thing where you're slamming the lamp onto it, I kind of want to keep this flat. And just slowly let it on. Time or pressure, you got two options. You know, it's either you push hard on the belt or you leave it on longer. So light pressure, just kind of let the belt do its job. To try going this way and pulling the knife across and get the light to do it that way. To move the whole thing like I do. So it's up to you. you go ahead and get this flat done real quick and give you a question. Try to get all the way back to that bolt. Do exactly what you just did again. <laughs> there you go. A little bit right there, yeah. Okay, so we went through and we established the grind and got everything set up for the first Jesmic. Now, this is the one that LT is going to give away. So you're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to his YouTube channel and following him on Facebook and all the different places. So when it's time to be announced, you know that it's coming. So this is the first one and I want to stamp my initials on it because that's what makes it magic. And then I will do some other voodoo stuff, but I can't show that. <laughs> All right, get that lined up. T. And it went that way, but we got the stamp. Starting out with a fresh water cut blank. Getting the shape right. Getting nice and smoothed out. Okay. 
It's nice and straight because it has not been to heat treat yet. After heat treat. Okay, so we'll, let's just say we got a, a, a batch of Scandi grinds back from heat treat. He's going to set up and do a final finish. So he's got them back. He's got it all set and ready to go. So now we're going to sharpen them before we build it. We'll show you that process. So at this point, that's kind of where he's getting his height. You get our the degree we want on our scandy. And that's what he's doing now. He's just putting a little, just buffing the edge of it. And they'll get paper tested. And we're good to go. And then uh, now we'll cover that in wax and it'll go to building. I don't know if you wanted to see this part or not. And that does, that protects it for when you gr do what? Well, because they're fully sharp now, this actually gives us a chance to protect ourselves while we're working on the knife because through the process we'll be handling the blade. And it also protects the metal as it moves through the shop so this is actually a dental wax. It'll create a seal on here that'll keep moisture out of it and any dirt and keep the blade from getting dinged so we won't have to work on that part of the process again. So we'll dip it a couple times and then once it's cool, we'll hang it up just like those ones. Okay, after they're sharpened, or I'm sorry, after we get them back from heat treat. If it's a scandy, it gets sharpened and waxed. If not, it goes directly to build. So Mike's gonna run you through a quick drill setup and build. So what we do is we'll take the scale material that matches the knife, whether it's for stock or for a custom for a customer or for a dealer, clamp that on there. So we use the knife flank itself as the drill pattern so we know where the holes go.
do the lanyard hole first, and then we'll do the two bolt holes on this particular knife. And when that's done, we'll trace the knife with a Sharpie, just so we can cut off some of the excess material, make it a little easier when we go to profile and flatten the knife. Basically what you're done with is you'll get a, an outline of the knife like that. So what we're going to do now is we've got the, the knife all drawn out. We're going to do a couple of quick cuts to take off the excess material and get it a little closer to the actual shape of the knife. I'm a little bit closer to the actual shape of the knife now. After we do the cut, you can see up in there, we're pretty close, but the scales are overlaying the stamp. So we don't want that. So for this part, we'll do the final shape on that section right now, and it'll be completely done because when we build the knife, it can't be worked on there again. Step on the here. That's how it look. Okay, when we get to the gluing station, we've already got our holes countersunk for the new hardware. So we've got some pre-assembled hardware here. The lanyard tube is already cut to shape for us. The nuts for the other side. And we've got some of our marine grade epoxy all mixed up, ready to go. So we lay that so that the insides are facing up. A little bit of the epoxy. Put the inside of the handle. Both sides, and each one of the pieces of hardware is going to get a little bit of epoxy and then rolled inside the hole so that it's glued in place as well. Blank goes in the middle, other scale. And the nuts go on the other side. You want to just start them a little bit so that you can tighten them up with a screwdriver. And finally, a little bit of glue on the linear tube, and that gets pushed through. Put in the vise, hold it nice and tight for us. And finally, we're going to take a little bit of acetone and we're going to clean off the excess glue that's on the front of the knife. the laner tube and that just helps us out because once this glue dries it's so hard to get off that we have to make sure that it's crystal clean and ready to go. Let it sit for 24 hours.
So we'll jump over here to this side of the table and grab another finished knife. So that's set overnight. And now we've cut the bolts off and now we're at the point of taking this GNS 100% through the end. Okay, this is where it's going to get a little dusty. I'm going to leave my mask off just so I can talk, otherwise I would wear a mask. Flatten the side to have a flat surface to lay on. And then we're going to work this down to the steel. This is where you think one of those CNC machines would come in handy so you could have your handles pre-made. That's okay. This way it's really handmade. So now we have it squared up, everything's down to the steel. Next thing I'm going to do is go to this router. I'm going to put the, the rough tape on it. Come to this grinder and this is where we will rough it in. So now we have the round over on, just did a half inch round over just to give us some kind of a shape. And now we'll actually shape the knife. I do the shaping on a 36 inch or 36 grit. This grinder is a 2 by 132, so it's a pretty big grinder with a long, long belt. And we cut the sides in. So all the hand contouring and everything that you see on the finished GNS is done right here on this grinder. And we do it all by hand and by eye. So everyone is going to be just a hair different. But sometimes people wonder how the contours are put in. It's really nothing fancy. As you notice, I'm doing it on an 8 inch wheel. So I'm, I'm shaping everything on a, on a wheeled surface, not on a platen. That's just the way I learned how to do it, and I kind of stuck with it that way. So this is kind of forming the palm swell in the center of the knife. down. Now when you're doing a knife, you kind of got to look at it from every possible angle that someone would have a hold of it to make sure that it looks right. Now I'll finish the, the very tail of the knife. Set the shoulder distance. And that is how you rough in a GNS. So you can see that it's contoured all the way. Ready for the next step. 
Use about a 5 8 radius. It makes a real good spot for your thumb and your finger. So again, I'm using a 36 to do the, the rough end. And now I have the nice shape that I like to have in there. Change grits, make it into a 120 so that when we move over to our finish belt, we don't have to fight any 36 inch grit scratches over there. Okay, now also at this point, I'm going to finish in front of the um, scale up near the blade. So that, that'll get taken care of right now. And again, I'll use a 120 and set the, the front of that. So now I have everything in front near the scandy grind. Got that little indent there, so we'll finish this top. Everything down here is ready to go, and the general shape is on. A couple more steps, and this will be done. Slack off. It's fine since we're gonna grind there. That way I save on wax. And I'll step to this grinder. Okay, a little history behind this grinder. When I first started making knives, I uh, used to use a, a sanding belt just turned upside down in a vise and sat there and ground knives so I, I did that and I made a few kit knives for gifts for people and someone saw that I was starting to make knives and I ended up building some of the kit knives and selling them and from those kit knives I was able to buy this exact grinder from R.W. Wilson back in 2001 or so and I have used this grinder ever since I can't tell, I put two motors on it modified a few things over the years but this is my grinder it's a big horsepower it's really fast and it's the only one i'm i've really ever comfortable using we have brand new wilmots we have baiters this is rw wilson handmade grinder and i've used it every day this is the only one i like so that's just a little history on that particular grinder but i taught myself how to do everything every time anything rw didn't teach me i learned how to do on this grinder so it's it's been my kind of uh, so now what I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of the 36 inch or the 36 grit scratches. Okay, so that takes care of that. I use two 120s, a red and a yellow. And the reason I always go to a yellow before I switch off is this is the final grit that we're going to use is yellow and it will help I'll put everything in the direction that we will finish the knife so that when we hand it down we don't have to spend time on the steel we can just work on the handle We'll give us the shot and let him finish the handle, be blasted, and it's done.
Ready.